Welcome to Drawing Basics with Mike and Melly. In this video, we're going to go over layers and drawing in different stages, going from a scribble to a final colored image. I usually start with a line for the line of action and scribble a really rough image to figure out how much space I want the drawing to take up. Whenever I add a layer digitally, I'll make the layer below it lighter so you can see what you draw when you draw on top of it. Working on paper, I usually just draw lighter for the rougher stages and draw darker once I know where I want my final lines to go. Then I'll add some basic shapes like circles and boxes for structure to help me plan out where to put in all of the details. Whether I'm drawing digitally or on paper, I like to use layers working from the bottom up and drawing lightly before making darker, more final lines. Sometimes I'll even do a few layers of structure drawing so I can get all the shapes and sizes to look right. Once I have the details looking the way I want on the rough layers or the pencil layers, I'll do a final ink line using a pen over top of the pencils if I'm drawing on paper, or I'll use a brush tool on a new layer if I'm working in Photoshop. As you can see, the first stage is very scribbly, but afterwards I go over the drawing to make it nicer and nicer in these pass. So it's okay if your drawing doesn't look good right away. The point is to add layers to improve and get something that looks good in the end. When the final line drawing is done, I put down another layer for the base color that is either a flat color or a gradient behind the line drawing so the lines are always on top of the colors. Once the base color is colored, the final touches are the highlights and shadows, which I make on what's called a clipping mask, so I can paint inside the lines where the base color is. That's what a clipping mask does. To make a layer into a clipping mask, just right click on the layer and choose clipping mask, and it will attach itself to the layer directly below it. Clipping masks are helpful to stay coloring within the lines. Now we're all done. Just throw in a background and some text and what started out as a simple scribble and some basic shapes is now a finished drawing. Thanks for watching. Welcome to Drawing Basics with Mike and Melly. In this video, we're going to go over structure and how you can basically draw anything by using circles and boxes as the foundation. If there's one thing I learned from art school, it's circles and boxes. Start every drawing by breaking things down to the most basic shapes, then build up from there. Almost anything you look at can be broken down to a combination of circles and boxes or warped circles and boxes to give you a basic structure or underdrawing of what you're trying to create. You can use 2D circles and boxes, or 3D circles and boxes, and squash and stretch them however you need to create an image. When I draw Melly Bean, I always start with a circle for the head, then drawing guidelines for where her eye line is, then add a center line for the direction that she will be looking. Then I draw another circle for her nose, and I'll add in boxes for where her ears go and more circles for her paws. Once you've drawn your character with circles and boxes, 
you can use that as a guide for when you're adding the details. This can help keep your characters consistent if you use those guides as reference points for the details each time you redraw your character, which you'll do a lot of when you draw comics. And there you have it, simple 2D drawing based on circles and boxes with details over top. That's how you draw Melly Bean. You can also use circles and boxes when drawing more complicated characters like superheroes. Let's draw Batman. Start off with a circle for the top part of the head. Then you can add a guideline, again for the eyes, and a center line for the direction that he will be looking. Then add a box below for the jaw, and then a box connecting two circles makes a cylinder which you can use for the neck. Then another box for the shoulders. Now that the structure is in place, you can add the details over top of the underdrawing. Again, we're using circles and boxes as a guide for where you want to add in the details. The circles and boxes can really help plan out where things go in the drawing. 3D circles and boxes can really help if you have perspective happening, like what we have in the ears. How one is smaller, the further it is away from the person looking at it. Circles and boxes really help to plan out where things go in a drawing, and it's a simple way to create almost anything, especially if you are drawing from observation. It's a great technique to simplify what you are looking at before adding in the details. Thanks for watching! Welcome to Drawing Basics with Mike and Melly. In this video, we're going to go over page layouts and how it's like making a movie. Page layouts are basically how panels are arranged on each page of a comic book. In North America, comics are read from top to bottom and left to right. So if you had a page like this, you would read it like this. To me, this is really fun because I like to think of it like making a movie and compose shots based on a standard TV rectangle. Based on that, my pages end up like a series of camera moves. I basically use two types of camera moves, pans and zooms. A pan is where you move the camera sideways or up and down following an action. A zoom is where you move closer or further away from an action or object. Let's take a look at the first few pages of Melly Bean and the Giant Monster as an example. When I was making this sequence, I had a description in the script say something like opening shot of Melly chasing Butternut through the house. So when I was thinking about what I was going to draw, I thought of it as if I were to film it in real life with a camera. I would start out with Melly and Butternut running down the hall and I would follow them with the camera going sideways, which is called a pan. So that's why I made the first panel a long sideways panel. Next, I wanted them to come around the corner and run down the stairs. So I made the next two panels tall, as if the camera would follow the action downwards as each character runs down the stairs. This would be what's called a vertical pan, where the camera moves up and down with the action. I made it two panels because I wanted to show Butternut run down the stairs, followed by Melly afterwards. Once I got Butternut and Melly down the stairs, I wanted to have them run past the camera and into the living room. So I made this a splash page. That's where one panel takes up two pages. The idea here was to draw them running towards the camera and the camera would zoom in as Melly says her line. In the next two shots, I made wide shots in larger panels, so if I had a camera, I could move it around inside the panel and follow the character's actions and dialogue. 
In the top panel, we follow Butternut as he runs into the room and jumps on the back of the couch. Then, we follow the action as Butternut settles in and Tug says his dialogue, followed by Chuck. When the camera isn't moving, I usually just do a rectangle panel or compose a shot with a bunch of space at the top or sides if the character is talking. I applied this technique of planning camera moves throughout the making of Melly Bean and the Giant Monster on each page. It's a really simple way to think about doing your page layouts. Long panels for sideways pans, tall panels for up and down pans, wide shots for zooming or following multiple actions. This is one of the great things about comics. You can basically make a whole movie all by yourself and tell your story with simple tools like a pen and paper. Thanks for watching.